thanks for coming. And it's like, it's totally uh, crazy that on Saturday, uh, someone wants a lecture. Oh my God. <laughs> well, uh, it, it's, it's good that uh, my last lecture was uh, quite like, um, yeah, maybe a couple of weeks ago because now I'm grading. So <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to, to escape the, 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 the reading of uh, my students' report to see uh, all of you and to share whatever I know about propaganda, which is, of course, not uh, the answer to all our questions. Uh, but let's start uh, because this was the, um, the topic that um, Rationnel, uh, no, Free Rationnel, right, <laughs> announced. Uh, so uh, first, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Anna Fenko, and I live here actually for almost 16 years. Uh, so uh, when I came here, Putin was already a president, but for the first time. So I didn't really experience the, how this uh, propaganda was growing in Russia, how it was all intensified, but it was quite clear in, uh, already in the beginning of Putin's uh, uh, ruling that something is not going to, uh, yeah, according to our dreams, let's say. Uh, so free press was uh, like the first uh, enemy that, um, yeah, started to, yeah, uh, t to get uh, punished and, um, yeah, um, um, actually, uh, yeah, it was the, the first thing that Putin did. He actually uh, destroyed the old and TV, and from there uh, it's uh, it started to get worse and worse. Uh, but uh, what I what am I doing here? I uh, uh, came here to do a PhD in uh, persuasive design, which is practically propaganda, but made with uh, things. So, for instance, if you have. Um, um, this uh, garbage bin that is so attractive that everyone wants to interact with it. That's persuasive design because it kind of persuades you to throw your garbage not on the street but in this uh, um, yeah, very nice and interactive garbage bin that talks to you, uh, sings to you, or does whatever, th uh, what, yeah, you've seen that probably. <laughs> this, these things, they are called persuasive design. So to uh, help people to do the right thing. And uh, from there, I um, also, um, yeah, started uh, looking into other uh, persuasive uh, techniques, like for instance, how can we uh, make healthy food attractive? What should we put on the package of healthy food? Should we say it's healthy? Well, probably not, because if people see that it's healthy, they think, well, maybe it's not uh, very tasty and I deserve something tasty. So this type of tricks, they are uh, very well known for in health communication, in marketing and together and in propaganda, of course. And together this field, how to persuade people is called persuasive communication. Uh, by the way, I have uh, kind of, it's a challenge to translate it into Russian. What is persuasive communication in Russian? I have no idea, honestly. Uh, I would say it's, uh, yeah, what, uh, when I try to uh, say it in Russian, I say, nauka ubeждать. That's propaganda for you, right? So it is, it's just only in the political um, thing. So on top of uh, teaching at uh, University of Amsterdam, I'm also doing uh, some non-profit projects and uh, mostly about also, persuading people to live sustainable uh, life and to, uh, yeah, to, to do kind of, um, to do things properly in our, uh, um, yeah, a world that is uh, kind of sinking in garbage. So like, uh, don't use disposable uh, bottles. How do we uh, convince, how do we persuade consumers to not to buy a 167th t-shirt? So how we do that? That's also persuasive communication. In a way, it's also propaganda. And yeah, so I'm also involved in health communication. And yeah, the, the, the last project uh, we started before the war started uh, was a kind of optimistically called back to normal because we were trying to deal with the, 
there are consequences, negative consequences of corona for mental health. So now it is, uh, it, it, it really uh, uh, sounds totally um, ironic. <laughs> so no one wants to, <laughs> to hear about it, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, um, so this is about me and um, about this uh, talk. Uh, the reason uh, I think I um, got uh, invited uh, not only by you but also by yeah by some other um uh, uh, um, kind of groups of people or media is because uh, the first months like after the first months of um, uh, of the war uh, i wrote this uh, article for uh, I, I think it's a new media right uh, um, e stories it's yeah, so it, it, it is a new independent media and it just so happened that one of my former colleagues worked there, so uh, that, uh, he invited me to, uh, uh, to write there. And uh, by the way, if uh, your English is not uh, perfect. So, if you are not uh, um, kind of, if, if if not everything is clear, you can just read it in Russian. <laughs> so, uh, at least uh, we have, or oh, just open it, <laughs> because what I will say, it's more or less based on um, the same ideas. But of course, two months already passed, right? It was twenty fifth of uh, March, and now it's. Uh, Exactly 25th of June. So yeah, well, it's all it's it's crazy. It's already four months, right, of war. Oh my God! And it's not going um, going to stop any any uh, time soon. So what I uh, yeah, instead of just telling uh, you uh, my own experience uh, with uh, uh, this total kind of um, divi uh, dividing of families, dividing of friends, this division within uh, Russian society, I will just uh, uh, yeah, tell you that this uh, um, documentary of um, Andrei Lashak that was uh, published just recently, right? Uh, I think it's like just several days ago. Who, who saw it? Okay, so everyone, <laughs> almost. So whoever didn't have time to see it, uh, this is actually a very, uh, it's a perfect illustration of our topic, right? Because it is, um, well, we can tell the stories of our own uh, friends and families to each other, and we can listen also to, uh, Ukra uh, the, to, to, to the stories of our Ukrainian friends who can't understand uh, why, for instance, their own family tells them, well, you started it. It's, it's, you are all Nazis. And in, yeah, and some uh, people they don't know. Some people they just uh, met uh, on holiday several years ago, and they are like from Italy or from Africa. They call, they care, they want to help. They uh, even provide some practical um, means to escape uh, from war. But their own relatives they just don't care. So how how is that possible? How did we uh, come to this situation where families are uh, divided and no one is, listen, uh, is listening to each other and everyone is accusing each other of bra being brainwashed? So I think, well, I have it in my family. My husband has it with uh, his brother. I have it with my uh, um, yeah, uh, brother-in-law. And it just goes on and on and on. I think everyone uh, pr probably has uh, people in their uh, immediate surroundings who are, in spite of being smart, kind, normal, civilized, still uh, uh, are poisoned by uh, propaganda. So how come? <laughs> how is it possible? So this is actually, um, um, yeah, I can tell you from, uh, from the beginning, I don't have answers how it <laughs> is possible, but I can give some uh, general uh, information to help you think for yourself. And um, I'll start with just um, like working definition of propaganda, which uh, is not uh, kind of, um, it's not written, um, yeah, I don't know, in Wikipedia. It's just uh, more or less common sense. So for me, propaganda is the form of persuasive communication. So the communication that wants to persuade you of something. And it is, uh, yeah, the goal is to influence your thinking, your emotions, and your behavior. So, for instance, uh, it is, uh, in a way, but it is political. So, uh, the difference from, for, for instance, health communication. Health communication tells you, well, if you keep smoking, you'll die. 
that's persuasive communication that it is just uh, um, yeah the, the goal is uh, to persuade you to change your behavior right so uh, propaganda also have different goals and the goals can be different in in terms of uh, they don't always want you to change your attitudes to change your beliefs uh, because sometimes they just want you to keep your uh, previous beliefs so strengthen your uh, existing attitudes and behaviors so yeah if you we're kind of thinking that uh, Ukraine is not a real state. Yeah, uh, by uh, hearing it uh, 15 times a day that Ukraine is not a real state, you just strengthen your own beliefs. So that's, that's uh, how propaganda can work on, uh, let's say, like-minded people, right? <laughs> And of course, our relatives and friends, we kind of think, well, uh, they are not um, from this group of people, right? <laughs> they are normal people who believe that Ukrainians are the same uh, uh, as uh, any, anyone else and they have the right to, for their own state. So what, uh, uh, what can uh, propaganda do to, let's say, more normal people, <laughs> uh, more uh, liberal and uh, civilized people? Well, it, uh, the, the more kind of ambitious goal is to change uh, people's attitudes and behavior. Um, and of course, um, there are other goals. For instance, there, the, one of the uh, goals is to induce skepticism. So um, uh, we will talk about that. It, it's very important because uh, already from... Um, yeah, from the beginning of the war eight years ago, it was uh, uh, clear that um, propaganda doesn't want people to all think that, uh, see the same uh, rea uh, reality. It just creates a lot of different, uh, um, a lot of noise, a lot of different uh, versions of reality, and people just became skeptical. So no one uh, is telling the truth. Uh, you are also lying. Europeans are lying. Uh, BBC is lying. CNN is lying. Yeah, of course we also lie, but it's our lie. Uh, it's better than, than your lie. So that is skepticism. So uh, kind of not believing that uh, yeah, the, the truth exists and that an anyone can actually be uh, telling the truth. And finally, what people can do, uh, to, uh, what, what we all want um, our friends and relatives to do with propaganda, we want them to actively uh, resist it right so this is what uh, uh, what uh, uh, we would like to know how we can uh, teach people how we can give people some kind of tools to resist propaganda it's the same as um, this um, um, yeah, a um, friend of our previous speaker uh, to, uh, was thinking about. It's, it's very kind of logical to think about tools. So, well, we just have a brochure and the brochure will explain what uh, fake news are and how to, um, uh, um, how, yeah, how to recognize them. And then all of a sudden every, everything is solved. So like give people tools and they will uh, apply these tools. Well, unfortunately it's not working li like that. And the reason is uh, um, that a, a lot of research from like 1960s, which is already uh, 60 years, right? Uh, they kind of uh, noticed that no tools will work after people already uh, have strong uh, opinion about something. Mm -hmm. So when people uh, change their views or when people strongly believe in something, there are no ways to, uh, to change it back. So, um, but if you have some kind of vaccination that is called ino inoculation, actually fancy word for vaccination, the same thing. And uh, if uh, you manage somehow to give these tools before people are exposed to propaganda, then it is, uh, it, it, the, the tools become really uh, handy. So people can use the tools like uh, separating fake news from uh, um, truthful news only when they are exposed to the tools before they are exposed to propaganda. This is called inoculation theory. Uh, so just to sum up what it, uh, inoculation theory says, it is the theory from 1960s. So individuals who are exposed uh, to um, kind of a little bit more stupid, uh, simplified arguments uh, against uh, their beliefs, 
um, they actually develop resistance. It's very easy if you if the arguments against your belief are stupid, it's very easy to uh, create counter arguments, right? So um, <coughs> then uh, these people who are exposed to this uh, kind of stupid arguments against their beliefs, they are um, really, really um, immune. They become immune to propaganda. And um, so the, 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 the way it works, you have to, different elements. So um, you have this uh, two-component vaccine, at, uh, almost like Moderna. Moderna is two-component <laughs> vaccine. So then we have a, a threat. So you say to people, well, there are people out there who want you to believe in something. And they will actually try to convince you. But uh, what they are saying is not true. So that is disproof. So two components, the uh, warning, so people will uh, try to, to, to tell you something and this proof. Uh, just uh, showing that what they're saying is total, uh, yeah, total nonsense. And then uh, people themselves have to uh, develop the co counter argument. So you don't really give people this counter argument. They have to think for themselves a little bit, just train their brains and then it's all fine. And uh, the finding that, uh, yeah, we're collected during this last 60 years, especially the, the last 20 years, they all point to one uh, big uh, uh, kind of uh, conclusion that this technique works in many cases, but only when uh, vaccination uh, is before uh, propaganda. And I will just give you a couple of illustrations. This one actually is not in the paper, uh, but I think it is really uh, nice because um, uh, I'm also interested in the uh, opinion <coughs> of uh, our um, journalists uh, and uh, propaganda kind of uh, creators' uh, um, um, opinion about this game. Because um, uh, the game actually is um, uh, designed uh, to, to create this uh, inoculation or to, um, to, to teach people uh, how to resist propaganda. But um, what, what you do if you uh, start this game, if you are participating in this game, um, it just um, kind of welcomes you and it, it is um, asking you to create fake news, to create the, some kind of uh, um, persuasive message which is not true. And uh, so by doing that, you learn the methods and then, well, this one actually is um, uh, one of the examples of the um, this, uh, um, messages that you uh, uh, were asked to create. And this is fake news from Donald Trump, then the president, uh, and it says that after the long uh, deliberation with my generals, I here decided to declare war on North Korea which uh, obviously was uh, fake news in 2020. Well, unfortunately, on, uh, yeah, on 24th of February uh, and uh, yeah, changing uh, Trump to Putin, it was not fake. It was like actual news. But uh, just a couple of years before, it was so unbelievable that uh, yeah, everyone uh, kind of uh, understood that it's not true. And uh, by playing this game, uh, people of uh, different countries uh, developed a really good resistance to persuasion. So um, they were uh, less uh, um, likely to be poisoned by any kind of propaganda um, uh, messages. Uh, why? Because they learned how it was created. They were participating in creating this fake news. And by doing that, uh, uh, they kind of ra um, yeah, increased their uh, digital, uh, digital literacy. Uh, of course, it's it's a good um, tool for uh, school children if you are working with students or uh, uh, kids. It's it's a uh, fun game to play, and then children will be uh, actually uh, vaccinated against the future propaganda. So, for instance, here is the uh, results for three countries. Uh, I think they had l more uh, uh, countries where they um, tested this game, uh, of course, all in the, um, um, uh, in, in, the in, in the native language of these countries. So yeah, um, in Polish, uh, Greek and uh, German. And um, 
One thing about this graph that I want you to um, uh, kind of to notice that no tool can uh, actually um, kind of lower the resistance from like 10 to zero. There is always uh, some people who can do better and some people who can still uh, believe in everything. So, well, what, they, uh, what it says that, okay, the difference between these two groups in, uh, in their resistance to uh, fake news and to propaganda, it is significant, meaning that the blue uh, kind of bars are higher than the red bars, but they're both kind of not zero. So everyone still is uh, um, in danger of being uh, uh, persuaded by propaganda. So it's not 100% sure, but it works to some extent. And then there is another example, and this example I uh, described in detail in the paper. I won't uh, um, yeah, actually explain all the details here, but I just want you to get um, just general idea. Okay, so there is a conspiracy theory in the United States, and it just assumes that, uh, well, whatever happened on 9-11 was actually um, uh, not the, 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 yeah, the result of terrorist attack, but it was the result of the complot from uh, special forces. So, uh, uh, practically, um, um, yeah, covered up operation. And for Russians, it reminds of something, right? We, we also have this story about uh, 1999. But it's just the other way around. It, it just, at, at that point, no one believed that it is a complot and that it's like a, a like really special operation by um, yeah, uh, Secret Service. But now it, it gets more and more obvious that it probably was. But of course, for a 9-11 attack, it's probably not true, right? And, well, at least um, uh, we, we still believe that uh, whoever did wa uh, that was indeed uh, terrorists uh, from Al-Qaeda. So, uh, but at, at like 10 years ago uh, and 10 years after the 9-11, uh, roughly, um, uh, the researchers uh, were trying to uh, figure out how it works. So there was at the time the movie called A Loose Change Final Cut. This is practically the example of uh, um, the same propaganda uh, message as you uh, can see on Russian TV today. Uh, so um, it was done practically by the group of uh, volunteers uh, trying to convince the Americans that all this um, uh, tragedy was the, uh, the making of um, uh, uh, Secret Service, with um, kind of the help of the government, of a lot of like journalists, so a lot of people were involved. That's their message. Okay, and uh, if you watch this movie, you can, yeah, it is still on YouTube. You can you can watch it uh, and see how how convincing it is. Uh, if it is convincing at all for you. Uh, but uh, what um, the experiment was doing, they actually um, first had uh, um, like the, the, the normal students from American universities to watch the movie. So um, one group only watched the movie. So this is, um, let's say, a pure propaganda effect they were measuring. Then there is a, a group two. The group two had uh, inoculation, so vaccination against uh, this movie, but it was, of course, done as normal vaccination before watching the movie. So what before mo watching the movie, uh, people were warned about the errors, the factual errors that uh, this movie contains. For instance, one uh, obvious is seen on this picture. So everyone saw the, uh, the planes, but no one saw uh, people uh, putting this uh, explosive uh, in, in the basement of this building. So why would you believe something that no one saw and not believe something that everyone saw? Uh, this type of uh, factual information. And another type of vaccination was, um, was kind of trying to find the logical uh, inconsistencies in the movie. Because the movie says, well, it's all like a plot that involves like thousands of people. 
And then uh, the logical argument was, if there is such a complot, how come that no one actually leaked this information? Because if you have like thousand people knowing about it, uh, especially in America, there are very big chances that someone will actually uh, leak this information, but no one did. So it's all kind of uh, um, total uh, imagination. So th this type of um, inoculation was used. So now we have one group that saw the movie uh, and. Uh, and two groups that saw the movie with preliminary um, vaccination, inoculation. And there was also f group number four. And this group number four is very interesting because it had uh, also this inoculation, but before the vaccination, they had like vaccination against vaccination. And this is important because that is what your relatives had the people who believe propaganda. What they had was uh, in this experiment. Um, so um, there was this message. Um, before uh, they start vaccinating, they actually said, well, um, you know what? Um, there will be people who will try to change your attitudes about specific issues. And there are some um, arguments for these um, ideas, and there are some arguments against these ideas. But you are smart. You will figure it out. Don't make other people change your beliefs. This is kind of vaccination against vaccination. It's called meta-inoculation meta in, in the... Um, uh, yeah, in, in scientific literature. But we can call it vaccine against vaccine. <laughs> Uh, and there, there, there is a final group that didn't see any movie, which is important in all experiments to have a control group, just to know uh, yeah, whether your manipulation actually is different from, uh, from zero. And here are roughly the results. Um, so first of all, there are still quite some people, almost 40%, without any uh, propaganda, they they kind of uh, tended to believe that it was all complot. So here you are, you have, um, well, free American society with free press, everyone can say everything. So you still have 37% uh, of people who believe that 9-11 uh, was a uh, government complot at that moment. It, it was uh, at a specific moment and in a specific group. Well, uh, students of um, some Midwest universities, these Midwest people that are now uh, prohibiting abortion. So they are kind of right, right wing people. Okay, and then um, when you just see the movie uh, without any vaccination, well, um, the amount of, uh, like the percentage of people who believe uh, raises to 50%. And this is just once movie, uh, one and a half hour, made not by uh, professionals, it's just made by volunteers on a home computer. That's it. Very uh, uh, like big effect of propaganda. <laughs> okay, so what about uh, vaccination? Uh, uh, you remember there are two ways of vaccination. Uh, first, uh, there are facts that are, uh, that are opposite to what, what uh, you've heard. And the facts work uh, quite well. So instead of 37% and instead of 50%, we have uh, only a quarter of people who are still believing in this complot theory. So but good result. Not perfect, <laughs> not 100%, but it is still a very valid result. And the logic works a little bit less, um, well, because it's very difficult to compare arguments. Well, facts are easy to understand, and people are lazy to, to, to switch on their brains. We'll, we'll talk about that uh, quite uh, in, in a minute. And then there is this group uh, that was asked to compare two uh, points of view, uh, propaganda and the vaccination, and make their own decision. And this is the, the, um, the result on top. So what you see that um, actually this meta in inoculation, so vaccine against vaccine, it totally uh, kind of, um, it, it made this whole vaccination kind of uh, uh, useless. Because people totally return to their previous uh, um, ideas and they didn't 
change their um, um, yeah, they didn't change their attitudes and their beliefs, but they also didn't actually, um, they didn't develop any kind of resistance to propaganda. So this is the story, which is kind of, I understand it's difficult to, <laughs> to, to grasp, but uh, bear with me because it is exactly what's happening with, uh, with Russian propaganda. I give you this example uh, of um, uh, MH17, and this example is kind of a very, uh, um, it is very relevant for the country where we are now, right? So, and uh, uh, those of you who live here uh, long enough, you all remember that it was like the major tragedy in the Netherlands, uh, because like 20 pe uh, 200 people died, and it was a kind of, at that moment, Europe realized, okay, the war is going on. It, it is happening. There is something terrible happening. Uh, but if you looked at that moment, I was still traveling back and forth to Russia, and, uh, and I was still uh, kind of, um, uh, looking at, at like occasionally into this uh, like um, Russian TV uh, propaganda uh, window, and then you realize that uh, what is how this uh, um, tragedy is described on Russian state um, TV and in Russian media, um, their um, strategy at that moment, their tactics was not to deny everything and to just say, okay. This is our way of uh, explaining this event. It's all uh, like one, one point of view. No. What they did, they created a lot of noise. They created a lot of uh, contradictory versions of reality, including the ones that is like, oh, actually, uh, there were not real people in this, on this plane. There were people who were already dead, like from the morgue. <coughs> So you rem well, some of you who are uh, old enough, uh, you can still remember this nonsense. And then, oh my God, how people can uh, believe that uh, bullshit? Well, no, the, the goal is not to make people to believe this bullshit. The goal is to make people overloaded, uh, confused, and uh, yeah, like to, to make them skeptical. Because if you ask people to think for yourself and you don't give them any uh, tools, uh, how, do they, how am I supposed to think for myself? Then people got confused. And then when people are confused, then something interesting happens to them. Um, so what happens to them is described in a very famous book, and I hope you all know this book, right? Thinking Fast um, and Slow. In Russia, it has some uh, idiotic title. Who, who, who knows what it, uh, how it's called in Russia? Anyone remembers? Kahneman? Yeah, well, that's totally uh, not uh, relevant. Um, the title, because it's, it's both about thinking. Uh, it's all about uh, processing our information. And what Kahneman actually uh, uh, kind of um, proposed, and it is ba backed by, uh, yeah, again, uh, uh, his research started from 1970s. At, at some point, he received Nobel Prize for them. So it's, it's not all. Uh, uh, kind of light and uh, popular science that you can read in this book. There is a lot like a uh, decennia of research behind it. And uh, what, uh, what this theory actually says, it's, it's currently uh, accepted by all cognitive scientists, by all uh, behavioral scientists, that we process information and we uh, make decisions based on um, either system one or system two. And system one is like primitive, but very quick. And this system uh, actually is the survival mechanism. So it is based on intuition, emotion, and it's not uh, based on uh, thinking slow. So system one is rational thinking. And um, the problem with system one, uh, two, uh, sorry, system two is the rational thinking. And the problem with the system is that it requires a lot of resources. You know, our brain eats a lot of sugar, so we need this brain sugar. Our brain uh, actually needs some uh, peace and quiet, and it needs time. So 
who, who has time? No one. And it also needs motivation, so you really have to, uh, to want to think. Why would you? It is difficult. So people don't want to do difficult things. People don't really do that. They only do that when there are a lot of uh, uh, conditions met. First, it, they are highly motivated to know <coughs> the truth. They are experts, so they have access to information, they have uh, mental tools, and uh, they have uh, all the um, uh, necessary knowledge available to, to think. That's the second one. So the expertise, motivation, time. They really need time and quiet, and they shouldn't be stressed. So a lot of, only when it, uh, all these conditions are met, then we can think. Uh, and honestly, it happens in 2% of uh, our normal uh, uh, life. So, I don't know what the examples are. Well, maybe when you deci uh, were deciding to move uh, to the Netherlands, you should probably switch on system two. Just to, because it's a life-changing uh, decision. So probably you all thought very uh, hard about that. <laughs> Uh, no stress. Uh, well, the, but there was stress. So for for some for some of you, it might also be system one decision. Yeah, you you, you see, it's it's so difficult to find all these um, um, uh, conditions met, and of course they are not met when you have this uh, meta inoculation. Uh, um, kind of intervention. So whenever anyone tells you, compare different arguments and decide for yourself. Well, it's easy to say, <laughs> compare different arguments and decide for yourself. But first, you don't uh, have motivation to, to do that, then you don't have time for that, and you don't have resources, mental resources, you don't have all the information available to do that. So what you do instead, you switch to system one. And system one is emotional, intuitive, and it works uh, totally irrationally. So um, you switch to this emotional uh, um, thinking, and here you have this uh, perfect illustration of uh, post-truth propaganda. So it's not one uh, reality against the, uh, another reality. It is creating the multiple controversial versions of reality. So whoever is trying to figure out what the truth is, is it has the, the person who tries to find the truth in this uh, post-truth reality, the person has to process a lot of information. And do we have time for that? Well, we are just stopped on the street by some kind of Russian uh, yeah, RT journalist. Are you uh, against <coughs> the war or you for, yeah, are you against Ukraine or you for Ukraine? So of course I'm, f yeah, uh, I'm loyal. I'm just doing my shopping. Just go, go, go away. <laughs> I don't want to think. And then, of course, there is also no motivation and there is a real danger to, to say something. So people don't want to think because thinking is not only difficult, it's, on top of that, it's dangerous. And on top of that, it's so uncomfortable because, uh, well, uh, so anything that, increase, that, that uh, creates the reality when, um, well, everything is uh, equally untrue, that is skeptical, right? So we are becoming, uh, uh, and it was uh, really um, in this, um, in the beginning of this like previous, uh, um, like the, 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 the conflict on Donbass, when I noticed that uh, a lot of my friends and especially a lot of the children of my friends, because, uh, well, the, the people who were like in their 20s, they became so much more uh, cynical compared to my students in, in, in the Netherlands. It was unbelievable how quickly they became cynical. Like, uh, and then some 20-something some, uh, guy was kind of telling me the story about the dead people from the morgue uh, put, uh, that were put on, on, on the plane. And I was like, well, some of my colleagues uh, Children went, were there. They were not from the morgue. They were from my uh, own uh, personal network. How can you say that? Okay, then there is a, uh, a Spanish, um, whatever, uh, flight uh, dispatcher. Oh, no, then there is a uh, Ukrainian uh, book uh, rocket. Oh, then it's, it's just for... 
And then I realized that truth doesn't matter. Even the factual truth doesn't matter. And you can, by this, uh, doing this inoculation, by uh, making this noisy environment where everything can happen, everything can, uh, yeah, of course we are lying, but you are lying too. So this is the, um, um, it, it's not just um, um, all of a sudden. So the inoculation for, for, for uh, like meta inoculation for what's happening now uh, happened already eight years ago. That, that's my main point. So people now are uh, not only now uh, um, exposed to propaganda, they were exposed to this poisonous uh, reality where uh, yeah, they were actually told that uh, objective truth does not exist. So that's, and when, the, um, and when on top of that, what, what, uh, what you have, so you are in this um, quick emotional system one thinking. And um, then it's easy to appeal to your emotions, especially <coughs> fear, anger, um, and on top of that you create the enemy, and on top of that you induce uh, violence. So that's like the, the totally poisonous uh, recipe for what's going on now. And it, it's all uh, happening when you switch off um, uh, your thinking. So. Uh, you switch off uh, your thinking mode, then you have these uh, uh, monsters in, 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 in your head. So that is practically what happens. And when you are confused, scared, uh, and you stop thinking, uh, then you uh, respond uh, according to so-called um, uh, like uh, peripheral cues. Uh, in communication science, uh, you have like central cues. Okay, what is uh, um, the message? Then you analyze the message. You analyze the source of the message. That's the central cues. But there are peripheral cues. Okay, what are other people doing? Oh, other people are uh, making this uh, Z uh, on, on their cars, on their clothes, on, on, yeah, whatever. Okay, other people are doing that. There might be some, uh, something, uh, they, they probably know something. So I will just do whatever, um, is, uh, will behave the same as other people. That's the survival, survival mechanism. Um, following uh, others, following this uh, uh, kind of all of a sudden uh, created so social norms, it's like the, um, uh, the very primitive me mechanism of survival. So people don't want to think, they don't want to know why is it that, well, you just uh, uh, do as other people do and that's, that then you might be uh, out of danger. And of course, emotions. <laughs> uh, we might think that uh, to, um, we need this, of course we need this compassion and um, we need this, um, <coughs> Um, kind of kindness, which is also emotional thing, but we have it anyway. So also uh, animals have it, right? So our emotions are not very different from the animal emotions, and it has been uh, proven also many years ago. And there are books on that. So uh, uh, here you can have like uh, for, uh, extra, um, extra uh, kind of. Uh, topics on that, right? <laughs> so it's a different type of, uh, di different area of science, but we, we know that we are not very different from, um, uh, from animals in the emotions we are, uh, we are feeling. The only thing that is different is system two. So how do we actually, uh, um, how can we uh, have anything against propaganda? Uh, these are all obvious uh, tools. So how, how can we uh, uh, think slow? Well, we can only think slow when we have time, right? Uh, and we only can use our logic if you are, we are motivated to think. So what can motivate your uh, relatives to, to, to actually start uh, switching on their brains? Well, in the movie, uh, in the documentary of Lashak, there were a couple of mothers that uh, kind of started to move towards uh, like a, a away from propaganda a little bit, right? If you notice that. And th they had a very strong motivation because they loved their daughters. And this is something that, you, well, uh, well, people, uh, if we try to keep, uh, in, like to, to, to keep dialogue, not to be, um, yeah, um, 
not to incite uh, this violence and aggression against each other, but kind of stay in the dialogue, just call and ask about the weather and uh, uh, just health, something like that. And uh, because if if we all become enemies, then we won't talk to each other and we won't listen. Only when we have still some motivation, and motivation, of course, is uh, our love for our uh, relatives uh, and uh, friends. Then, of course, all the tools are um, well known. So your friend who told uh, uh, about this, uh, um, yeah, um, comparing fa fact checking. So this is indeed like the lists are all uh, existing. So uh, in the Dutch schools, uh, it's now this digital literacy and this uh, um, kind of media literacy is what is uh, actually part of the program for secondary schools, like, uh, right? So everyone is, knows how to teach that. It's just the motivation, time, effort, these things are missing. And uh, uh, also what is, uh, uh, what is making it difficult is that um, people are becoming uh, very cynical. And that's, that's one of this most uh, um, kind of vicious and most poisoning uh, um, working of this meta inoculation. So uh, actually vaccination against vaccination. Then uh, people become confused, people become cynical, people don't believe in truth. That's why I have this uh, uh, image of um, uh, what is truth? Uh, religious painting from a uh, Russian painter, actually. Uh, so this is the whole uh, kind of, um, of course, it's, uh, it's kind of a um, Christian uh, legend, but it actually uh, stays uh, true to any uh, atheist. <laughs> I'm not religious, I'm atheist, but I still believe in objective truth. Because if you stop believing in this, uh, if you become too postmodern, if you still believe in facts, if, if it doesn't really matter how many people died and uh, who is responsible, then of course uh, you can, yeah, uh, the propaganda, any, anything becomes uh, possible and then we have these monsters in our brains that are uh, eating up um, everything. And then of course um, another thing which is important is, uh, well, uh, all the animals have empathy for their own group. So this is emotional. So uh, we are not uh, different from uh, uh, apes in, in this one. What, what uh, um, animals don't have, they don't have um, out-group empathy. So if you are too divided, you start thinking that the other group is not human. And it happened, it, it's not only happening to Russians and Ukrainians. There were many, many uh, uh, ca cases, there were many, many events that made people actually that divided that they uh, stop being em uh, empathetic, they stop actually seeing the other group as, uh, as human beings. Well, even uh, uh, Trump made it in four years in America where people were also divided within their families, so they stop uh, treating each other as human human anymore because well how can he, uh, any uh, reasonable human being uh, believe in that well how can a, any reasonable human being believe in this so we are not reasonable we are not human so we can just fight each other and that's what's happening when we uh, stop thinking uh, logically uh, so my main message is just uh, yeah practically uh, switch on uh, your own brain and try to find uh, uh, this uh, different uh, uh, kind of uh, resources. Provide resources for your uh, loved ones to switch on the brain. <coughs> provide kindness, provide motivation, provide time, pro and provide resources. Information, on that. Information itself is not working. It's only working with all the other things. Uh, safe environment, um, friendliness, this type of things. Otherwise, it's, it won't work. And yeah, I really hope that at least some people will uh, become reasonable, provided these resources. And uh, thank you for your uh, time. So now we can uh, yeah, um, go to yeah, discussions, questions, whatever.